The following podcast contains strong language, like what the actual fuck. Scarecrow Festival is like the most important day of the year. Daft cow. This is just ridiculous. What the actual fuck. Hey, what the actual fuckers, and welcome to WTAF of This Country podcast. Now, first, he's a man who's just come back from captaining a flight from Australia, stopping off in Singapore to stretch his legs. He's our own Captain Dipstick. It's Neil. Hello, sir. How are you? <laughs> I'm very well. That was, that was quite polite, apart from the dipstick bit. <laughs> uh, well, if I just me just calling you Dipstick is polite, then I'll take that. That's good. No, I said apart from the dipstick. <laughs> Okay. But it's still politer than you usually are. I, yes, I know. I know. Now, science says there are some actors that when they appear in movies or TV shows can make it 27% better. Our superfan guest this episode, in that case, is an 89 percenter. You'll know him from such great work as Fun at the Funeral Parlour, Vic and Bob's House of Fools, Toast of London, and loads more. You'll also know him as Pensioner Barry from Watford, and of course, psychic, clairvoyant, and medium, Clinton Baptist the only man that has made martin mucklow cry now i'm getting a word it's alex Lowe. oh great great thanks lovely to be here guys <laughs> well thank you i ha i do feel over the last couple of well three or four days that i've got to know if not you clinton baptiste really really well because i've binged the podcast I've watched the videos, um, and how surprised was I today to watch the latest uh, Mystic Hunt video? And there was our, our one of our friends, Keris Nelms, in all kinds of positions with Clinton Baptiste. Yes, yes, we. Uh, I started filming. I did one the other day where uh, Clinton has white trousers on. Often Clinton's <laughs> outfit is is black and white. And um, he unfortunately sat on a rusty spring uh, on a trampoline <laughs> and it looked like he shit himself, which of course he hadn't, uh, despite encountering uh, what he thought was a ghost. So then the next one, uh, The Mystic Hunt uh, number two, was filmed in a haunted hotel. And Keris Nelms, uh, who's playing the landlady, is, is a... I mean, you, as you know, he's a brilliant stand-up comedian and, and uh, particularly good MC, you know, compare. And she was supporting me sometimes on my Clinton Baptiste tour. That's right. And she's just sort of great and absolutely right to play a kind of busty, barmaid uh, landlady. And um, yeah, so it was great. You know, I mean, you know, if you're... When you are work as an actor, this sounds very pretentious, when you're working very closely with people, and in this thing we do we do a bit of sex stuff, uh, you don't want to spend the whole time going, <laughs> treading on eggshell. I mean, you have to be very sensitive with each other, but mm. it is such a kind of uniquely strange thing to be doing with another human being who's not your wife. Actually, in my case, it's quite a strange thing to be doing with my wife. <laughs> 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 Sorry, darling. Um, uh, no, I'm kidding. Um, oh, we have a, a perfectly good sex life. Anyway, um, <laughs> let's let's um, delve more into that, Alex. Can we? Can we just? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay, obviously. obviously no. uh, so you know, it is one of those things when you're an actor, you do have to you end up having to be quite close with people. So we did this thing in this hotel near Watford, uh, not far from uh, Warner Brothers, Leaves and Harry Potter Studios. Um, where we, the guy sort of let's get on with it, and we, it, it does feel sort of particularly sordid going, what, what, so what is another position we can try out? If anyone who hasn't seen this thing, it's done, it's very <laughs> common. Oh, it's, it is, it's, 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 it's hilarious. It's very, because oh, I, I was actually thinking about it, because when you, when you start doing the sex stuff, it's just normal, but it's like, <laughs> well, I mean, normal for most people. But if you if you two are like you're very close to each other, are you just staying in character, or are you trying your hardest not to laugh? Um, I think it's oh god, I've done sex scenes before with people. Vicky Pepperdine years ago, I did this this sitcom called Grass, which Simon Day wrote, mm. and I just remember I don't know. I, I think with this one with with Keris, it was like we haven't got this thing place for long. Let's get on with it. We've got all these little 
things we wanted to achieve. And uh, the guy who's playing the ghost had his phone up <laughs> with the Karma Sutra going, what about this one? Do you want to try this? <laughs> what, what's that one? What's, I don't know that one. Um, <laughs> so I think, you know, it's sort of funny. It's a little bit embarrassing. You just get on with it. I think there's nothing worse than half doing something and half throwing yourself in. You just get on with it. I mean, you know. But I mean, when, when we did Grass with Vicky Pepperdine, I just remember a few days before saying, look, you know, we all had to go on the train to somewhere out near Norfolk. And uh, I found out, I said, oh, look, I'm just checking what time you're catching the train. You know, perhaps we could catch the train. And she went, are you really phoning me because you're worried about the sex scene? <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, my God, until you said that, I hadn't given it a moment's thought. <laughs> and now I'm shitting myself. <laughs> so, you know, you're there with a guy with a boom mic. And uh, you're sweating, you're doing all this sort of grinding. And um, so, you know, it's, it is, can be really awkward. But. Yeah, well, that, that sounds like Neil's sex life, and he's not in show business. There's always a bloke with a boom mic in there, isn't there, Neil? Absolutely. Follows me wherever I go. <laughs> Documents my life. <laughs> yeah. Now, one of the other videos that um, I saw of, of Clinton was. Um, like I said in the intro, reducing Martin Mucklow to tears. Oh, yeah. Why don't you tell me not to do that? <laughs> my jumper. Um, that was when we did this Comic-Con thing. And we went, oh, God. We went out there, and I honestly don't think anyone knew who either of us was. I'm not sure who we are. Right. But I said, oh, my God, Paul, I, you know, I, I love... Uh, this country and my kids love it my wife loves it and I said it's an honour to meet you and he seemed to know my work and we had a good old had a laugh we went out and did a little bit of filming but honestly there were hours of that sitting there going nobody knows who we are it was a very strange thing it's slightly humiliating there's a big pile of autographs and a pen and you're thinking, <laughs> yeah. I might just chuck this in the bin on the way out. <laughs> oh, oh, Was that the first time you've done one of those, Alex? The first and last. Right. First and last. I don't know, unless, you know, there, there's a Phoenix Knights one or a uh, anything else I've done one, you know, that I could go and sneak in. But, um, yeah, it wasn't. It was, I mean, also, I don't know, it was very strange. It was in Stoke and people were dressed up in sort of Star Wars stuff and all the rest of it. So it was a funny combination of comedians, actors, and Justin Lee Collins was there. Oh, right. JLC <laughs> was there. And I just thought, what a funny thing this is. You know, yeah, I yeah. Really knew quite what it was doing. Mm. Goodness me. So you said that you and your family are all this country fans. When did you yeah. first find out about it? Were you there from the very start or did you binge watch all of them? Well, you know what? When you've been around a block like me <laughs> all these years and you've been for lots of meetings at the BBC about having another meeting and then you get pushed onto this producer and that producer and it's just this endless process. You know, I've, I've had so many bloody pilots and things. And uh, so your sort of ears prick up when you see something. Think, oh, well, you know, this is new. And almost immediately I thought, well, that's really funny. That's a really funny line. And, oh, that's funny. That's made me laugh. So often you see things and you think, mind you, I was wrong about uh, Fleabag as well. That came on and I thought, oh, what's this shit going to be? And sure enough, I thought, oh no, this is really funny. <laughs> so occasionally you're surprised. And that was the, that was um, the case with this country. And uh, so really from the start, I thought, oh yeah, this is pretty funny. Mm. And if it wasn't that I'm such an embittered old actor who wishes it was him the whole time, I probably would have enjoyed it even more at the start. He spent a lot of time going, why is that not me? <laughs> <laughs> but it's nice to not see genuinely the same old Oxbridge crowd doing their stuff you know it's mm. nice to see those guys and it's such a such a sort of unique take on things let's go out into the countryside and see how these people are living so mm. yeah I loved it. but i think really it's my wife and kids when they got hold of it that you know it was just on repeat my son goes to bed with it on just as background noise i mean he he knows the thing inside out yeah mm. So which series then did you, if I can nail you down to a series, was, was yeah. it that really impressed you the most, Alex? 
I think probably how many have there been? Uh, three, oh, three cool. series and a and a special. Which is the one with the 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 sort of wicker men things making the uh, the the, the, the scarecrows uh, series scarecrow. one? Yes, uh, probably series one in that case. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean that—that's the one I've I've watched many many times, but uh, yeah, I think that probably. Are they going to do any more? Don't know. Well, they said that no, but they've also said that when the money runs out, you know, if the BBC want them to do more, then they'll <laughs> then they'll yeah. do more. So yeah, yeah, in the end, money talks, doesn't it? So yeah, but what I really love about those two, they they commit so much to it. You know, you know when. You get these characters. I always think like um, Ronnie Barker in Porridge. You know where you think I can't. Part of me can't believe these people don't actually exist. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Where it's mm. just absolute commitment to it, and it may be because those two are sort of so close to that. Th- those, well, living in that way in that in that. Well, they 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 come from somewhere down there in the southwest. They yeah, come yeah. from where we live. We we live in the same town. Yeah, we live in uh, 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 Sorencester in Gloucestershire. Yeah. Okay. Right. Sure. So you know, I just think that you know, when when you see three dimensional characters like that, that is what I love about acting and and being an actor. You know, if something's just a sort of nod towards something, I can't think of any specifically, but you know, when you see sketches, I'm not even going to name people, but you know, where it's sort of. Uh, a light dusting of characterization, or it's knowingly funny, mm. and sort of it's no. I know that I'm being funny here, but it's just absolute three dimensional uh, commitment to something. I think that's what's so good about it. And when you're in something, can you tell when you're in it that it's going to be like one of those kind of shows, or it's going to be one of the things that you think rather doing it sort of by the numbers and they're. Uh, I think, um, yeah, I mean, you can always tell something's going to be terrible, but I mean, there've been things before where I've just thought, I mean, I've been, where I've just thought this is the funniest thing going. And of course, what you forget, the other thing you forget is that, um, a lot of the rest of the country are intensely conservative with a small C. And I mean, you two are sort of comedy buffs and I work in comedy quite a lot and I know comedy people and you forget that you're sort of um this is not this is not suggesting we're intellectually comedically superior it's just that you know uh your your benchmark is kind of higher mm. Mm. That's to say. but you know you're not uh, snobby about what you think is funny one, one thing i find really strange is that a lot of the stuff that you appear in is the stuff that I, is yeah is the stuff that i love Oh, okay. Well, you know, you know whether, whether it's Vic and Bob or Toast, and and I, it's weird that I'll watch something and think, "Oh my God, there's Alex Lowe." It, yeah, it, yeah. It's, it's almost like it it runs in tandem. It's like that the the vein of comedy that 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 you're. I mean, like one of the not biggest crimes because that's terrible in the world that we live in now. But one of the things I always find so such a shame is that fun at a fu- fun at the funeral parlor wasn't oh, yeah. as big as it should have been. Mm. Because that, yeah, to me, was one of those things that was just like a beautiful pocket of comedy that yeah. just didn't seem to get seen by the amount of people that it should have been seen by. Honestly, I have had so many, I could, you know, I'm sure everyone says, but I've had so many things that were about to be big and for one reason or another didn't happen. Mm. Uh, I mean, Fun Funeral Parlour actually got loads of, when I think now, we thought it didn't get that many viewers. When I think how few viewers everything gets nowadays, mm. you know, because it's so dissipated with the internet and yeah. YouTube and, you know, uh, repeats and box sets. We got, you know, a lot of people watching that at the time. And then, did it go on BBC Two for a while? I think it went on uh, I think it did, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I had the, the DVD box set. Yeah. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, yeah. and I, I used to do like your son does with this country. That was what I used to go to bed to. Oh, was watching that. I I love that show. There was just something about it. It was one of those things that was just so funny. Well, as Reese Thomas, he's Mm. very funny, and I still nick a couple of his turns of phrase, you know, from that. Uh, And the other one, which I really thought was going to be huge, was the Peter Serafinowicz show. Right. Which he did for BBC Two. And I think that slightly suffered because 
that Vivian Vile show was on just before with um, Prentice Saunders. What's her name? Saunders, Jennifer Saunders. Uh, Jennifer right. Saunders. Yeah. And it was, it was about a kind of horrible vampish agent. And that was on just before us. And I think it had a lot of people, I mean, it didn't do very well. I think a lot of people turned off. By the time it got to Peter Serafinowicz and this celebrated half an hour of comedy, uh, the, the figures had dropped so much. I don't think people saw it. But also the Peter Serafinowicz thing, I think it had a lot of repeat due to budget. Right. And loads of repeat jokes. So it's a bit like, yeah, I've, okay, I've got that gag. Maybe, you know, I don't know, maybe just need more money. But at the time, I thought this is the funniest thing ever. You know, and it, it was a kind of slightly surreal, maybe a bit more of a comedy connoisseur's thing, mm. you know. Mm. Well, Alex, when you get given a script for a yeah. comedy show, yeah. um, how do you gauge the laughter when you're actually reading it through? Is it how much you laugh or...? Yeah, I think so. I think that's all you can go on, isn't it? I mean, mm. there are things that have me laughing out loud, and I think, oh, God, I'd love to get this. Um, yeah, and then at other times you go in and you do the read through, and you think, oh, I see, that's why that's funny, the way that guy did that. Mm. Um, but at the other, at other times, I'm amazed at what people find funny. You know, the cheapest thing. I mean, I get away with murder with Clinton. <laughs> kind of, you think, really? That pathetic <laughs> blog, Tom. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, it's funny, actually. My friend um, who works at Hattrick, you know, I did this thing, uh, cheap, 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 with Noel Edmonds as my mm. Baron from Watford character, which no one seems to have seen. 31-hour episodes for Channel 4. But it was out in the summer about two years ago. And I got in touch with Helen Williams. And I said, hey, look, I want you to watch my Clinton thing. And she went, oh, Mystic Hunt. How long did it take you to make that up? I thought, <laughs> oh, you can mock. I tell you what, people will love it. Yeah. I tell you, that's, that's it. it's, it's what makes you laugh. It's, that is it. It's what makes yeah. you laugh. It's mm. unashamed, you know. As I said, I've been in countless Radio 4 comedies. I did Claire in the Community for like 15 years. I've been in every type of comedy. I've been in every... I was with Renaissance Theatre Company. I've been in tons of Shakespeare in my time. And I don't think there's anything wrong with a bit of kind of honest-to-goodness, end of the pier, here's the setup. here's the middle bit, here's the punchline of a joke, and here's a callback to that joke from earlier. Here's another bit, here's a non-sequitur. It's just... That's, that's funny. It's just... It doesn't mean... You know, you don't have to be snobby about it. You don't have to be surreal or mm. meta or whatever. I tell you, I was listening to the Clinton Baptist podcast at work yesterday, and it was the episode where Clinton was trying to cure the guy that had uh, trouble with his bowels, and when he was, and when and every time he, every time he walked, he farted. I was pissing myself, and that is the lowest. Well, if you like, yeah, <laughs> but it was the lowest. That's the, you know, it's the, it's a fart sound. But I, it's I love that. Mm. There's nothing right, and you can't get snobby about it. It's all subjective. <laughs> wrong with that. I laugh at that. I, who wouldn't laugh at that? Exactly. A fart, a fart exactly. will never not be funny. Exactly. It was it's, as I think it's Euripides or Plato said: "A fart is a fart is a fart." <laughs> you know, and that's that's my mantra. <laughs> and I also think as well that, that the world that we're living in at the moment, I think that the simplest comedy you can make is what everybody needs. They don't need highbrow, highfalutin no. stuff. You got to think about. They just want so again. If when Clinton tells someone to, uh, they, you know, he's having an argument with someone, and all of a sudden, ah, oh, fuck off. That's the biggest laugh. Mm. That's the biggest laugh when he tells someone to fuck off. But I think, you know, if you, as I was saying about committing to a character, if you're sort of in character and you get that character and you understand all the cogs that are working in his head, you know, it sort of informs the way he speaks. And that's why it's funny because it's him doing it. Yeah. Exactly. It's me coming on now going, <laughs> it's a funny noise, you know. You wouldn't laugh. I would. <laughs> I would. <laughs> I would. <laughs> because it's the funniest thing. It's my new podcast. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. with celebrities. Um, <laughs> Alex, so where did the, where do you get the basis from your, for your characters? Where do you usually find them? So, like for Clinton and Barry. Well, 
Um, well, it's hard to say. I mean, Barry is based on all my Cockney forebears who are from South East London. And during the war, uh, they, you know, there was a move to get people out of the East End to the sort of green belt. And they, and they moved to uh, Harrow, you know, Northwest London. But, you know, growing up, there was often these old Cockneys, uh, in the sort of old Cockney way, you <laughs> see. And, you know, the back of the, the sort of larynx was drops a bit, so you got this sort of horrible c- 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 <laughs> carrots, nice bit of carrots, carrot cake. Um, and... Uh, <laughs> You know, Clinton is, you know, P- Peter Kay's creation and Neil Fitzmaurice's creation. But, you know, it's that sort of um, terrible camp tacky. Uh, you know, quite fancies himself as something else. But actually, when push comes to shove, there's nothing more to him than a kind of cheap trickster. Mm. So, uh, but I mean, where do any characters come from? I don't know. I My wife is often accuses me, I'm doing an audition of going to my fail-safe comedy character mode. So why do you do your catch-all comedy thing? And I always think, oh God, I thought I was being different. So maybe it always comes from something, some kind of base, level, your base coat, mm. uh, which is, I don't know. It's very hard to say, isn't it? I mean, sometimes I wonder whether there's a school of thought that says actors are actually, uh, you know, like Clinton, are inhabited by some strange ghost. Which I think, the more I think about it, that's kind of possible, isn't it? Because often you're on stage or whatever, and you're not thinking about the next line and not going, oh, I, this looks good where I turn up stage at this bit. It sort of happens organically. Mm. Yeah, yeah. that doesn't sound too pretentious yeah. to any, of you, <laughs> any of you people out there I'd like to talk <laughs> so, was it, when you went into acting then was yeah. comedy where you wanted to aim towards originally? I think so yeah uh, but I did my degree in performance art at Leicester Polytechnic uh, that famous drama school in the East Midlands and um it was so sort of arty in the sort of eight, late 80s. Performance art, it was mad, mad stuff going on that I don't think anyone would finance nowadays. You know, we had, there were little theatre groups like Dogs in Honey and, uh, oh, I can't remember. But, you know, doing mad things like sawing up a chest of drawers on stage, really mad performance mm. art. And we would go out into the woods and do sort of mad movement and stuff. And... Um, I think for a while I sort of took my eye off the comedy and I thought, no, no, this is, I'm going to do some worthy art. And then straight after that, I, I Kenneth Branagh, who I knew of old, because I did Another Country, the play when I was about 14 in the West mm. End, he invited me into his company. And I was also his stand-in for films. So when we did Peter's Friends and Much to Do About Nothing, you know, he gave me parts in it, which was lovely, but I was also there for the whole thing playing his parts while he was behind the camera. Right. But then, I, you know, I think comedy really has always been my, my thing. And it's only probably in the last 10 years that I've, I've sort of, I suppose I'm sort of known as a comedy actor, if I'm known as anything. Uh, clearly not by Chortle, I'm not known as anything like <laughs> a comedy actor. Uh, but... Um, you know, I, I, but the other thing is, of course, if you are an actor, who wants to be known for one thing? Jesus, you've got to earn some money, haven't you? So, mm. you know, I, I do everything and, you know, I've been in straight plays and I'd hate to think that people stopped using me as a, as a straight actor. Have I gone on too long with this? Answer? No, no, no. no, not at all. no um, carry on. But, you know, growing up, you know, like all these Cockney ding-dongs, my old Cockney forebears, I mean, they were sort of really interested in comedy. It was kind of East End comedy thing. And there was a lot of store put by funny quips. And I mean, my dad, uh, I always remember, you know, if there was like a caption contest in the newspaper or that QPR, it was my team, used to have like, you know, the caption contest and win two tickets. And I always remember my dad 
put in great store by this. He thought it was the it was the ultimate thing. Can you write something that's so funny in a couple of lines? And I just remember thinking at the time, my God, this is really important. Now a lot of people are at home and their parents are talking about science or classical music or mm. engineering or or fiddling with a car. But I always remember there was a lot of store put by uh who's funny and my dad used to take us to see sort of mike yarwood and um you know he went to see uh what's his name michael crawford and stuff you know that was sort of seen as important and when you're young and a bit of a sponge like that it's you think oh well this is this is just what everyone thinks this is very important stuff mm. comedy and comedy writing and that sort of thing Mm. so when you were when you were filming phoenix knights with and yeah. clinton the baptiste the voice and the look was that all peter k oh, yeah it was all peter and it you know i mean let's be honest it's based on Derek cora i'm sure mm. so it was it's very much that that sort of thing but um uh yeah i mean it really was peter's thing and i'm and i'm always at great pains to keep peter in the loop about what i'm doing I hate for him to suddenly go, you're just taking the piss. You're doing everything as Clinton. And, you know, I mean, he never stops me. He'd never gone. I don't like it. I just think mm. it's kind of professional courtesy. I mean, mm. he wrote it originally. I fleshed it out. It was only a three minute thing. Yeah. In one episode, but I've fleshed it out and it's got a bit of a history now. But uh, thank God, because, you know, people still, come up to me in the street and say, call me a nonce. <laughs> yeah. This is the, the most appalling catchphrase anyone's ever had. But it's, <laughs> it's, that is, 50 classic moments of comedy, that bit is, is in there. <laughs> it, it just is. It is just one of those, cla- I was watching it again just last night. I was just watching that bit again. It's all of yeah, yeah. favourite bits. So when, when it comes to you, sort of the same fleshing out the character are you yeah. are you working out the whole backstory of him or are you looking more about what he's going to do in the future now when i do you mean do you mean when you get a when you get a script or you mean yeah yeah when you're yeah yeah um well if i'm in, entirely honest uh for me someone who very often turns up for one or two days on something and plays a character I would be lying if I said I'm doing endless research. <laughs> um, but I think, you know, you want to sort of make an impact in that little way and you have a sort of feeling for what this character is. Um, yeah, I think you sort of make up a little bit of a backstory or, or you know, it's just an actor's exercise I really like if ever we're in rehearsals, which normally there's never time to do this with TV, but on stage, mm. which you might be familiar with, it's like the hot hot seat where you sit there and people actually fire questions to you about about your character. And I always find that very useful because it forces you to think, oh yeah, would he, you know, what car would he drive and, and this sort of thing. Mm. Um, so I like that in rehearsals when you've got time to do that. Mm. But um, I think quite a lot of the time turning up on a TV show and doing one day, you want to hit your marks. You want to know that you can tweak this line and it's funny if you pause before you do that or mm. it's quite a technical thing on the day. Mm. Do you like it when you're allowed to improvise? On yeah, stuff? I do like that. I really mm. like that. And you know, Dan Skinner does Angelos. We do it at this podcast, Angelos and Barry. And mm. that's just the, the best fun. You know, I mean, I'm normally embarrassed by how immature that <laughs> is once again. Uh, one, we we one today and I just thought, jeez, that's so <laughs> man of my age <laughs> that but isn't that no that to me is a gift if you can be a man of a certain age and still act like a fool oh man uh, that's that's the way that isn't that the way to live uh well it is yeah yeah i mean it, I mean, it is an absolute honor to still be allowed to do that i mean what time did we get into two o'clock in the afternoon on a what day is this day wednesday mm. two mm. o'clock in the afternoon <laughs> <laughs> we've 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 sp- we've spoken to dan and he's been a guest on the on the pod right. and he right. and uh, again it's uh, it's put in two two right. giants of comedy together isn't it it is well it's very kind of, it's <laughs> so thrilling you know it's such a laugh and um 
Yeah, and, and you know, people still like it. We've been doing it for years. And I think that if we really tried harder and did more of them, we could sort of pick up a regular thing. But, mm. uh, you know, he's very busy. I, I've started doing a lot of this Clinton stuff. Mm. But yeah, I mean, you're right. It is an absolute joy at my age. You know, there are things I literally don't know that a man of my age knows. <laughs> you know, like, um, <laughs> like things like car insurance. You know, these words like fully comp, third party. I don't know what any of that means. I've managed to go to one <laughs> so far. It's so boring. I can't yeah. actually cope with it. Yeah. And I think that's a pretty stupid way of going about your life. But I just, I just, somehow I've managed to get away with not having to know those things. Yeah, but then it also makes you, makes you feel like you're grown up a little bit if you know those kind of things. Yeah, but I mean, I've got a wife and kids and I should, there are certain things I should know. Yeah, well. When you lift up the bonnet of a car, do you know what, what, what you're looking at? No, as long as I can get in it, it's got four wheels and a steering wheel and it turns on. That's ah, all that's I... The steering wheel, that is, that's that one. That's, that's yeah. that one, yeah. I, yeah. Think, I did see it on the internet. I think that's yeah. the one you turn oh. the turn the circle of things under the car with the <laughs> circular thing in front of you i think i mean we did we did this thing today about uh on angelos and barry we there's and i just in case bill gates is watching i just make this absolutely clear <laughs> he watches every week he watches <laughs> every week well, it was a nonsense i'm not just saying this happened but we had a story that he went along to margaret's over 80s uh computer club in Castlebury Park in Watford and tried to get off with it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> in the process, I was trying to think of computer stuff, you know. Uh, so, you know, he, he went in there with the uh, pretending that he was going to change the font. I think I was change the font or <laughs> load the computer paper because I don't have anything <laughs> up at my fingertips. <laughs> you know, and I think... Uh, I just don't know anything. You, know. Uh, dear, you said earlier on about making an impact, um, and I don't know whether you are aware of this. There's a podcast called A Cup of Tea and a Chat uh, with Ali and Bean. Now, Ali and Bean are both legends on uh, West Coast America radio. Oh, yeah. And um, they've started their own podcast uh, that's on Patreon. It's very funny. Um, and the very first episode, Bean brought a clip in of Barry from Watford. Uh, he thought that it was a real radio show. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it was, it was ba uh, Barry talking about minty biscuits. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, and they couldn't understand how this pensioner had got on the radio and was doing nothing but talking about... Well, it was, I think it was talking about disabled... Parking, I think it was, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, but he kept going on about Minty Biscuits. And all of a sudden on that podcast now, Minty Biscuits has become this massive thing. I hope so I could get in touch with them. I, I'm sure I could put you in touch with them. Uh, they, uh, I would do that because I, I was on... Um, when, when was I on? I was on their podcast a couple of weeks ago because I messaged Bean uh, after listening to the first episode and said, actually, you do know that that... Barry is not a real person. Uh, and he did say afterwards that he knew it wasn't, but they were playing along for everything. Oh, but yeah. everybody, so much so that they sent a packet of minty biscuits to someone in America because it became this, thing, it became this <laughs> big thing. But I will, I'll put you in touch with Bean. Just Thank so you me. know, Bean was originally in, have you heard of K Rock Radio from Los Angeles? Yeah, yeah he did the morning show from. Yeah. Dave. For. 30 nearly 30 years and he's a uh, a double uh hall of famer as well uh in america but how long ago did they do the minty biscuits then? oh this would have been they're on episode about about a month ago so it wasn't that it wasn't that long ago great okay yeah yeah so i will i will uh, put you in touch with them yeah please do that's good. yeah 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 and it's just so it's weird that sort of thing where somebody thought that it was a real person talking all of a sudden it expanded into this this massive minty biscuits oh, okay. thing <laughs> okay. well, that was, was, you know the ian lee uh was doing i mean it was a real show you know it was uh bbc west midlands yeah and he you know i used to do the 11 o'clock show with him ian and then 
I had a show on XFM and he once phoned up as his one character, Mike from Muswell Hill, which sounded a lot like Ian. Uh, no, Mike from Camden, which was just Ian's voice. <laughs> and so I, so I wanted to get him back. So I, I did Barry for, hit, you know, and he didn't know it was me on LBC. And then when he started doing the, the odd Saturday on BBC West Midlands, I thought I'd phone up there as well. But, you know, we always think that's not our funniest one, the Minty Biscuits. We oh, really? Surprised, yeah. But the great thing, he plays along so well on that, Ian. He's just great the way he mm. plays it so straight. You know? mm. I mean, he's brilliant, Ian. He's a fantastic improviser. Absolutely. Right, before we carry on, we're going to play a little game, if that's okay with you, Alex. Okay. We're, we're going <laughs> <we're> to <gonna> play <laughs> Kerry or Curtain. I'm going to give you a line of dialogue, oh, and you oh, need to oh. tell me you've got yeah. a 50-50 chance. So if you don't okay. know, just have a guess. Here we go. Right, Number... All right, I'll get them all right. Go. Okay, we've got five. Number one. Do you know what? He might not be a peeper after all, but if he is, he's probably just a part-time peeper. Is that Kerry or Curtin? Kerry. That was Curtin. Yeah. <laughs> peeping stuff. That's right. <laughs> Try and channel some of your Clinton Baptiste just to <laughs> see if you can get the answer. Number two. Oh. Number two. Is that Arthur laughing? I've never seen Arthur laugh. Kerry or Curtin? Definitely Kerry. Uh, that was Curtin uh, in the aftermath. Oh, that one was Curtin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Number three. I take one look in the mirror in this suit and I feel proud. That is a trick question because that's Kerry at the funeral. That is Kerry. Well done. <laughs> that's one out of three. Number four. The trouble with my lifestyle is that I pick up a lot of injuries. Definitely Kerry. Well done. Two out of four. This is good. Now, number five. I love the drama of what goes on here. I even love the sound of wasps buzzing around the bottle bank. I'd say it's Curtin. That was Kerry. But two out of five, that's not bad. That's all right. That's all right. It's terrible. I'm supposed you to... Look, you look so dejected. You're so dejected. <laughs> <laughs> Please, Alex. It's very acceptable to you. That's people that haven't got one right. So. Yes. Really? Yes. Okay. It was... It's not bad at all um so it's going back to this country um and we've we've spoken to a lot of people about it they're doing a u.s remake um how do you feel about uh, this country transferring over the pond i can't see it working okay i mean it's sort of uniquely british west country i mean what are they what will they be sort of uh, trailer well, we know they're from Kansas. That's the most okay. Uh, they haven't really said whether they're trailer park or anything. No, they haven't, no. Uh, they've got different names. They're um, Kelly and Shrub. So, and the vicar, surprisingly, is played by Sean William Scott, Stifler from American Pie. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I mean, I didn't think that The Office would ever translate, and that seems to have done really well. So. Yeah. Who knows? But um, I don't know whether they're... I sure it would be... They can eke out some subtlety in the way that, you know, that's something that's uniquely Kansas, mm. <laughs> as, as our one is uniquely Siren Sester. <laughs> I don't know. Good luck to them. Yeah. They've got a bit of pedigree behind them. I mean, Paul Feig is uh, going to be directing. Right. Um, and then it's Jenny Bix, isn't it, who's uh, the head of the script writing team who did, like, Sex in the City. and Right, okay. Films. So fingers crossed. There's a little yeah. glimmer there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wouldn't it be nice, wouldn't it? It'd be nice to send something over there as opposed to just receiving everything from America. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so when it comes to 2021... Um, is Clinton going to be back out on tour? You know what? Because I was really, I've been licking my wounds since uh, March when my tour stopped. And we were just having great fun. There's me and Keris, you know, she was supporting me, or Mike Cox, or Tom Deacon, or John Wilson, a lot of uh, great, Rich Wilson. A lot of great, uh, you know, comedians whose names I clearly can't remember properly. <laughs> but, um, yeah, we were up and down the country. It was great fun. So now, uh, 
it, what actually happened was uh, Phil McIntyre Productions, who are producing the show, got in touch with me. My agent said, look, let's have a Zoom with Phil McIntyre. And I thought, oh, my God, that sounds ominous. And they said, look, the chances are people won't be back in the theatres in the spring. So let's delay it till the autumn. So basically, I've got a year now before I'm out and about doing the Clinton tour. Oh, right. Uh, and so I said, well, I was going to do a new show in 2021. And they went, well, why don't you just do the new show? So now I'm writing a new show for 2021. But it's been a, an idea I've had for a long time. So it's not like I'm sitting there going, oh, good, what could it be? Yeah. I have a costume already and I've got a sort of design sorted. Uh, I think my director can do it. But it's just sort of going a step on and, and trying not to make it look quite as homemade as it did before. I mean, that was sort of charming, mm. that it looks a bit homemade. But I think I just I want it to look um, slightly bigger and better for this tour. Yeah, right. Like, something like that, Alex. How much of it is scripted to how much is improvised? Then, do you mean on the on the night? Oh, uh, yeah. So on the night when you do a performance. Well, do you know what the honest truth is? I I really take my hat off to uh, stand up comedians who, when when you're doing a stand up night in a above a pub or in a comedy, you know, uh, a comedy venue. And you see people who absolutely improvise with the audience and they speak to the audience. That is something I wish I could do. That's my one thing. But I, I really think I'm much more of an actor and a comic actor than I am a stand-up. And I'm so envious. I mean, there's a certain amount of dealing with the audience. I mean, it would be ridiculous if you just got your head down and <laughs> ignored everyone. Just, no, no, these are the lines. These are the lines. Shut up. Yeah. No, and I do a bit of interaction. But there's an awful lot that's that's scripted, and I, you know, if I'm in a play as a straight actor, quite often after a few weeks, the other actors are trying stuff out, and they go, "It's really great to keep it fresh." And I'm a bit of a one for that's what the director told me to do. That's what I'm going to do. You know, I, I sort of like to be quite strict. Uh, so yeah, there's a certain amount of improvisation. As I say, it would be ridiculous not to, but. Uh, I, I kind of know where the laughs are, and also there's a lot of comedians who would say they're they're they, they're on for the flight of fancy, but you know I'm sure there's a script behind it a lot of the time. Mm. I'm just a bit more honest. Well, ho hopefully you'll keep the same venues because you were due to I think it was February the fourth to be at the Wyvern in Swindon, um, and we will be there. We will be there if you're uh, at, uh, at Swindon. Um, yeah. because we'll, we will definitely get tickets for that because uh, okay. I think it's um, one of those things that if you get a chance to see Clinton yeah. live, you've got to oh, do it, haven't well, you? Well, yeah, I really hope so. I mean, it, it, they're such lovely, warm audience. What, what I will say is, someone's going to prove me wrong now, but it, it's so lovely when you get social media or, you know, well, social media or emails or whatever it is, of people enjoying what you're doing it's so well you know guys you know it's so gratifying isn't it mm. people like it so so uh please come along i might even sort you out a couple of tickets for, oh my uh, god really? <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> well so, we uh, were it, once you've um i mean i take it there's a there's a website isn't there so we can put that as a, a link in the podcast Clint we'll give you all the information clintabaptiste.com yeah. And also, if anyone wants newsletter, f footage, extra bits, outtakes, uh, well, that's about it, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Clinton Baptiste. That would be, you know. We'll put, all, we'll put all of those links in the show notes so people can just okay. click on that. That's no problem at all. Um, just one more thing before we let you go. The, the Clinton Baptiste podcast... Yeah. Um, the third series sort of changed a little, had a bit more of a narrative going through it. Is that, uh, will you be continuing that format? Well, I won't be uh, for the next one only because it's so, it was, it was in lockdown. It, all of it was done or 90% of it was done on clean feed, you know, which is like a high quality recording thing. Uh, and it was just like doing war and peace. Getting really? Yeah. It was so hard to do, and I've already started uh, Series 4. That will be back in the studio 
it won't be it won't be that long narrative again because it nearly killed me. But what about me. what about a spin-off sitcom on the TV with Clinton and Ramon? I would love that. We both love that. That we would be it. well. Th- three of us would love it then because I oh, think I that it's yeah. just made for it. I think it's just made for it. Yeah. Well, I would like to do that healing festival as a screenplay and a, and a film of it. You know, I think it's got a kind of nice narrative, and then you pepper the, your favourite sketches. In, in that as well. Mm. But Lewis McLeod, who plays Ramon, yeah, he and I would love to uh, do some Clinton and Ramon stuff. Yeah. Sometime. We'll keep our fingers crossed and hope you do. Absolutely. Uh, what lovely fellas you are. <laughs> well, <laughs> what can we say? Me. When you get it, that's the, the beauty of, of doing this podcast. If you've got a chance to speak to a lot of people that we love their work, it's not just the fact that we um, just talk to anybody that likes this country. We try and talk to people that we genuinely oh, love what they do oh well thanks so much fellas i i really appreciate it. you know because you know uh, paul cooper was uh, in my podcast he's he's in uh, uh he's in um, the healing festival clinton baptiste which one he well he's in a few he plays michael the technician but he was in a massive sketch and uh we recorded it and i got to the end of it and i thought it's fatally flawed because he plays a technician who, talking of farts, uh, uh, gets Clinton's dad's uh, expulsions, reverses them on a computer, and <laughs> it's like the spirit world talking. So he goes, <laughs> and it is, Clinton is the chosen one. <laughs> and then and we did well, this whole thing of, of, of Paul as this character, Michael, going, well, I reversed the polarity, and then I did this. I suddenly thought, no. It's Clinton's the charlatan. Why would this guy do it? Mm. It just no sense. And so I had to say to Paul, I'm so delighted to work with you, but the sketch, it just doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't, it just, he wouldn't do it. Who would that, do it? That's showbiz, isn't it? That showbiz where, you know, you just get cut yeah. out and... Yeah, oh, trust me, I know, yeah. <laughs> Nothing that you so is there anything that you're working on at the moment that you can tell us about, or uh, are you just sort of hunkered down for lockdown? I think I'm, this, this Series 4, uh, I, I did something before the lockdown in, in a studio in North London with Lewis and with uh, a guy called Lenny Sherman, who's a stand-up, and Sarah Tom, who plays Karen, and a variety of other <coughs> characters in my in Clinton stuff. And so I want to carry on with that, and that's just audio for um, Series 4. Alex, honest, thank you so much for spending some time with us. It really has been an absolute honour for us. It really has. Oh, it's great to speak to you. I just want you to know that I'm in my daughter's bedroom. I'm not pretending to be some sort of student. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know you're taking that illusion away. We sort of thought you you had book, shelves on bricks and no, all. No, no, hold on. <laughs> you know, this is all uh, posters and stuff. Uh, so uh, yeah, okay, guys. Well, thank you very much, and thanks everyone for watching. Yes, thank you so much, Alex. Um, Neil, do you want to do your little bits and pieces before we uh, uh, finish? Let's fire through this. So you can find us on all the social media under This Country Pod. You can email us with any questions or anything you'd like to know under WTAFThisCountry at Hotmail.com. Also, we have a website for you to visit, which has everything on it, WTAFPodcast.com, which includes tickets for our final show, fingers crossed, May the 28th, 2021. That's it. Yes, and you can also become a Patreon peeper if you join our Patreon. It's patreon.com forward slash WTAF. Uh, all the different rewards and uh, tiers are there. Um, that's it. Thank you ever so much, Alex, once again. Yes, thank you, Alex. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Neil. Thank you very much, Pav. Thank you very much, everybody, for watching and listening, and go and get plumbed, you fuckers. Bye-bye. <laughs> bye-bye. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Sooty. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Sooty. Scarecrow Festival is like the most important day of the year. Oh! Daft cow. This is just ridiculous. What the actual fuck?